Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the State of the Arc podcast. My name is Mike. My name's Kason. Today is our, let's see, this is the 10th episode of our Xeno Gears uh, story analysis. We left off. You head back to D Block after all that happened with Rico being arrested. And you're interrupted as you enter uh, by a bunch of uh, battlers, like people who know Rico, right? They're, they're like friends of his or uh, fans of his, or whatever you yeah. call it. And they basically pull you aside and they want to let you know that he's in a lot of trouble. It's, yeah, it's, it's a woman yeah. in particular. And uh, yeah, we're up like in that room, that the champ's room, champ's room basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they. This is, I think, where we learn about because I don't know that we knew that it was him that had crashed. Did we know that it was him that had crashed? Uh, into I think the... Rue Cohen had made mention of it okay. before, but they basically con- not only confirm this, but also go into how the battling committee basically manipulated him or used yes, him. Yes, it do wasn't this. exactly. That's what they tell us yeah. because, according to them, the battling committee is made up mostly of like people from the ethos, from the church, mm-hmm. right? And Sigmund, the current Kaiser, has ousted the influence of the ethos from the government. So in retaliation of that, they were trying to use Rico to assassinate the Kaiser, but make it look like an mm-hmm. accident in the battling arena. And he didn't buy that. <laughs> 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 that it was an accident, right? So anyways, um, mm-hmm. They explain all of this and they basically say that Rico is going to, like, his punishment now, like we were talking about, they're just going to send him back to D-Block or whatever. They're right, actually going to have him in the battling arena, but against a, a, a monster, monster he won't A be big monster, and he's not allowed to have his gear. He so can't he, fight in the gear. Yeah. He's got to do hand-to-hand some uh, gladiator kind of Roman yeah. type stuff. And so they're asking if we'll help. And so the idea here, as, as Faye and Seitner are listening to this, is, well, while we go down to get the gear back, we'll come back up through the battling arena, because there was two paths to yeah, go in there. Yeah, that's what right? they said. There's the path from the arena downward, where all yes. the gears are stored, but then there's, yeah, a separate one where the trains kind of supply and right. bring stuff in underneath. It's all underneath the arena, though. Right. And so... <clears throat> They figured they can't get into the battling arena because it's closed down right now to get in. So they'll go on the supply train. But yeah. since they'll already be down there, they can just take the path out through the arena. Yes. Save Rico on the way right. of escaping. Right. Now, what was funny about this, though, is that we had a Hammer kind of figure things out for us. But once we hear this news, we're like, hey... We got to do it tonight, and Hammer's like, yes. "We're not, we're not we're ready not to ready. do this." Yeah. But it's like we're doing this now, and it's funny because anytime somebody asks us about this, specifically for Faye, like, "Hey, is this for Champ?" and he's just like, "No, this is just like whatever." But we got to do it now, even when he meets up with Champ later. It's like, "No, nah, you're just on the way. Like, yes. it's no big deal." Yes. But clearly, he is going he, there specifically to, to rescue him. him. Yeah. I think it's 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 a good. I think it's good. Uh, it's good on Faye's part in general that he's not just so direct with what he wants, you know. Well, he, and he he's knows, a little aloof. He knows that Rico wouldn't appreciate being saved anyway. So playing <laughs> it off as true. it was that's just true. coincidental that I was here yeah. is actually more of a playing to Rico's feelings than it is mm. a sense of true pride that he has. Right? Well, in that sense, Faye may already have the thoughts inside that I. it would be nice if I had Rico's help. Right. Yeah. If Rico would help me, yes. and so I'll help him so that he can help me, uh, otherwise he probably wouldn't have made this such a big priority. Right. So in any case, um, they, I love how, well, actually, one more note that I made here in this conversation is these battlers, they basically say that Kaiser Sigmund had stirred up a lot of anti-human sentiments in Kislev, like against demi-humans. Yes, anti-demi-humans, is, yes, yeah. Or, sorry, not anti-human, anti-demi-human. Anti-demi-human. You're right. So, which is interesting based on what we observed about him last week. Yeah. Being that all the other characters have rounded ears. He has very pointed ears. He does not. They made it very clear that his son is Rico, who is is a demi-human. And Rico's asking his mother, was my dad a demi-human? And she's like, well... Uh, she just doesn't want to answer the question, yes. but it's like clearly, yes. Like, look at you, like your dad's definitely a demi-human. Kaiser Sigmund is definitely a demi-human. He is. Th- this is uh, 
Now this movie game, this game came out a little while ago, and so I don't know how common this trope was used at the time, but it does seem to be, because like Hitler was like a quarter Jewish or something, sure. and so Voldemort is part muggle, yeah. and so the, the people who are prejudiced against the thing have a part of the thing themselves. Sure. That That's become kind of, I, I want to say a trope, but at the same time, it's a, it's a, like it's it's good. Like Hitler did not resemble the Aryan sure. ideal that he, that he claimed to, exactly. Yeah. But and it's like you're, he was like kind of short and dark hair. And like he just didn't look yeah. what he claimed was the the best way to look, and it wasn't him. But that didn't stop him from claiming it, and the people sure. liked it. In some ways, he was just kind of playing to yeah. the people around him, and like, yeah. hey, this is what the country is. This is what humans should be because we're the humans of the world, he's and this is our country, to what German, they actually exactly. Feel. Yeah. And so Sigmund also, in some similar way, may be parroting that type of, you know, prejudice that the sure. society already has. Because sure. he's a political leader, you know. On top of that, um, I mean, we don't know this, at least at this point, but he might also be trying to hide the fact that he is Demi. Yes. I not, would think not he in would that cover portrait. his ears better <laughs> if that was the case, but... Maybe this is a way mm. to do that too. I don't know. I wonder if the booklet we we, I no, mean I don't the, have the physical game, but yeah. I I will say that on a CRT TV you may not notice those ears being so pointy as much sure. as you do on an HD TV with the internet where you can find his image. But his portrait should or his the full image of him would have appeared maybe could have appeared I guess in the pamphlet. The pamphlet. Yeah. I kind of want to look at that. I'm going to look up that. See if you want to put find a note some scans online. Yeah, because otherwise it's like, I mean, the internet hardly even existed back in 98. <laughs> Certainly not in the way we know it now. Right. And so it's like people may just not have noticed that. Sure. So uh, the next note that I made here is that um, the game, it, it, it's really funny how it can make sequences really exciting that are otherwise like not... Like I thought about it afterwards, and I was like, "That uh, that wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily the most exciting thing ever, but they, it made it that way through its use of the camera again." Oh my gosh, so. they're so good! <laughs> they uh, the directors of this game are so good, yeah, so it's, artistic. It's great, but when you it, jump for the 90s, man. off of the like the lookout platform onto the train, yeah, and then and then like in there, it's as like the train like passes by, and they make the <laughs> so it's good. like the. For it some goes reason, into the tunnel. For some reason, the carts are like disconnecting or malfunctioning. Yeah, what the heck? All of them are doing that. And honestly, that's <laughs> just so the player has a thing to Something do. Something to do. Something, Something to do. exciting to happen. And you're doing that like in Final Fantasy VIII. You got to jump over, and it was kind of fun. So they just threw it in here as a nothing. But thing. it honestly does Didn't feel matter. exciting because of how they use the camera. <laughs> right, right. It feels hectic. It's and, oh a my really gosh. exciting action sequence when really it's like they got onto a train, they jumped off the train. That was really yeah. all there was to yeah. it. But I just I wanted to make another mention of how great the camera work is in the game. It's yeah, phenomenal. it was great. And was all great. throughout this sequence, there's gonna be many points in which I point to that. C a question: <clears throat> Can you can you miss that train? I think you can, but I don't I'm remember what happens, or I don't even remember if I missed it. I think you can jump off and miss it. I think you can. Because the train goes. You I are was controlling. I didn't know that at first. <laughs> it's going, and I'm just like, sweet. Oh wait, oh crap, I have to jump on. And it turned out when I jumped on, it was like at the very end of the last car, but yeah. I don't know if, if... If you had fallen off, I think what would happen is <clears throat> there would be another one and you'd go back and it would just keep going because there'd Fair be enough. the next supply train or whatever. Fair enough. That's what I assume. I don't know that for sure. Someone in the comments will probably give us an answer to that because I don't think I've ever missed jumping on a train before. Anyways, <clears throat> the next dungeon through the, the air ducts, um, is the very wide and spacious air ducts. Yes. <laughs> Huge. Yes. You can just run through them. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely support your weight. All that, all that good um, stuff. But this is another example of how the game makes navigation in dungeons really confusing and hard. Mm. And I think when I was re-watching or, or going through, like skimming through certain parts of one of the other podcasts, previous episodes, yeah. You were saying that, oh, it was for the sewer, uh, the sewer mm -hmm. dungeon. You were saying you weren't sure if the camera changed or reset after a random after a battle. battle. I don't know do if that's know that? the case, but I do know that when you look through the vents in this air duct, mm -hmm. it does reorient the camera back to north again. So that okay. it's pointing north, south, 
you know, east west. Okay. But if you had been the opposite, then when to where you're done, it, it goes was back south north. It changes it. Mm. But the thing is, is that that hallway that it's in, both walls look the same. So, so you, you might you were going left. You just keep going left. You're totally oh, flipped great. around. And there yeah, was at least twice. I swear that twice, happened to me like several times. There was at least twice where I started heading in the direction I thought was mm -hmm. forward, but I was going backwards from where I had just come because I had had the camera exactly oriented in the opposite polar direction, if oh, that makes that's sense. Funny. So you have to watch out for that in Xenogears. Yeah. Gears. Whether it's a random battle or a cutscene or something happens that takes you away for a second from that screen you were just on, you mm -hmm. have to pay attention what, where was I oriented on that compass? Because you will get lost if you're not aware I was pointing west or I was pointing whatever direction. Yeah. And it, oh, it can funny. make navigation really tough. You know what's funny though? As uniform as these texture tiles are and they look very similar and it's, you kind of get lost, they're really good looking. Like yes. they're, they're very, the it's detail cool. is great. <laughs> yeah. It's just, they're kind of used it's same a lot. It. Yeah. And it's, it, yeah, they use the same assets all the time, and yeah. so it's it's hard to distinguish landmarks. It's hard to distinguish a difference between this hallway or that one or this room and that room, because they're all the same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Anyways, one it's cool. It's it's uh, with a lot of things in this game. There's an aspect of it that's super cool and you don't want to lose, and there's an aspect of it that's very frustrating. You wish could be changed. Yeah, you wish you could lose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just how Xeno Gears is. That's just life, I guess. But you sneak through that dungeon, and uh, there's a couple cool things there, um, like kind of just funny things, uh, charming things, like we talked about uh, that Squaresoft used to do a lot at the time. But mm -hmm. there's a guard who they're inside that little booth, and there's two of them in there, and the one guy leaves, and he's like, "Hey, what are you doing?" And he's like, "Oh, nothing. Uh, don't worry about it." And you, when you get into that room later, there's nobody in the booth. And you could pick up a little mini gear. So there's like an action oh, figure. Oh, yes. That was so or funny. A, like that a was so funny. Right? Yes, yeah. And the guy comes back in. He's like, oh, what are That's you doing mine. with my figurine? That's my collector. That's, it's yeah. like a, a, a collector's <laughs> edition, like pristine <laughs> yeah. figurine. He's like pissed that you took it. Oh and he runs gosh. in with a bunch of guards to attack you. So, and, you know. Uh, I'm pretty sure we, we kill him. An, another way in which, and I've pointed this out before, that they make NPCs into individuals into mm -hmm, people yeah. with their own lives. Give them these unique attributes. Yeah, yeah, instead of just using them as vehicles to point you in the right direction or to mm -hmm. give you the dialogue that gives you a hint of where to go, they feel like human beings with distinct personalities. It makes the world feel more alive. So I really like that. Um, so nice little touches like that as you're going through this dungeon, but eventually you get down to the Veltal. You come up. Oh, that was interesting though, when you're down there. Um, I didn't, you don't know where it is. You finally, oh, you right. reach the place where all the gears are. There's like, you know, 40 gears or something. You're, you're the little tiny dude and yep. you're just walking around and like, yeah, none of these look right. And, but there's a point in the middle where you have to push a button and, and it like it rotates them. gears. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> super cool. Super, super <laughs> cool. Um, and then eventually walk through one of those is where Veltal is. And yeah. I'm like, all right. Let's, Get into it. You, you go back up into the battling arena areas where Rico is at and uh, a Rankar is there attacking him, and so you beat it up real quick. This yeah. is the level one monster that we fought at the very I, I beginning I know, I was gonna game. say, <laughs> you'd think Champ would actually have probably been able to take care of that Maybe. himself pretty well, Maybe. but I, don't. I I was thinking there would be another thing, because we get there, we show up on the arena, and there's like a rumble. Like, oh yeah. crap, something crazy is about to happen. There's gonna be some things in the air, or, well, there kind of are eventually, but, uh, it turns out it's it's a rank car, which is just not. I was expecting a different new, monster. <laughs> very very big kind of monster. I agree. And it turned out to be this kind of nothing. That's thing. probably the result of we could either spend time creating, designing a new monster, yes. and working out whether or not we're going to be able to fit another asset on the disc right. or just reusing a monster we've already made. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> to it's save just, time. It's just not as scary. It's just not. No, it, it's not. And they didn't need that build up too. You know, it would have been better if we showed up and he was already engaged in combat with this thing. Yeah. And then, but instead of doing the build up and the ground shaking and what is that? What? What? And it's they uh, could have least, They could have at least changed the color on the texture or something. So yeah, it's like made it like a red one. Rain car. That would so that it's yeah. like, oh, this is like a higher level, higher yes. difficulty rain car. 
that at least they could have done that. Right? Yeah, that would have been nice. Um, but anyways, you beat it up and you start talking to Rico, and this is where I want to point out <clears throat> that there's some, I feel there's some really good characterization happening here for the trio of characters, uh, Rico, Faye, and Ellie during this particular mm. sequence. So you've had Faye, who up to now has really struggled with finding a reason to fight. Yeah. Or finding fighting meaningless. There isn't yeah. a reason to fight. Yes. Why do you enjoy fighting? He asks to Bart and to all these other people. Rico. Yeah, Rico too. He's yeah. like, why do you enjoy this? I don't want to fight. I don't right. want anything to do with it. Um, struggling to find purpose in fighting. You have Rico, who's almost the total opposite. He doesn't see why there should be a reason to fight. <laughs> um, <laughs> When you first uh, fight him in mm. the in the baptismal ceremony, Faye says to him, "Enough! There's no purpose in doing this. I have nothing to do with you." Yeah. And Rico's response is, "No need for a reason. This is the D block tradition, <laughs> just, right?" Just what we so do. he he's confused about why Faye seems to think there needs to be a reason to fight. Fighting is just what you do. You know, um, you know what's funny about that? The fact that they call it a baptism, just in general. Yeah. That's, you know, gives some of the religious connotation towards what they're doing. And he talks about, oh, you don't need a reason for the tradition. You just yes, do the tradition. Just do it. Sounds like it's a little bit of a religious reference there, just in general, of like, you got all these traditions. Nobody knows where half of them came from. You do them just because that's what you do with tradition. You do mm. it over and over, and you don't question it. Yep. <laughs> and then... Um, and then it, the fact that it's called a baptism, it just kind of like seals it up. So there there's, there's definitely there. some of that going there. But in addition to this, you have Ellie, who has been struggling to know who she should fight for oh, this whole right. time. Whether she should remain loyal to Solaris or whether she should join with Faye in resisting Solaris. So that's kind of a middle ground between the two. Like she yeah. does want to fight, but she doesn't know like what yeah, she understands side the, she should the fight on. Importance Right. Of fighting, yeah. being, I mean, in the military, <laughs> yes. but being conflicted about where the loyalties should be placed. Yeah. So all three of these characters have been fighting with these things, and for long periods. Faye and Ellie, in particular, since mm -hmm. basically the beginning of the game, have been yeah. struggling with this internal conflict, and they've been, yeah. um, they've been, what's the word? Uh, confronted about it by the other characters. Mm -hmm. So it's like Saitan and Bart and others are trying to pull Faye into realizing yeah. he should be using his power for this or that reason. Yeah. And he's resisted, 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 resisted. He's sort of come around. We, we said like there were degrees to which he did. Yes, like, he for slowly a while, became yeah, he less was, reticent. Yeah, he was like, I'm okay with using Veltal, but I'm going to let them decide when I do it. Sure. Because right? yeah. then the, the impetus of the the, the consequences is on them, exactly. not on me. It takes it off of his shoulders. Right, so it's like, okay, I'll, if Saitan or if Bart wants me to get in it, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he would probably still struggle with the consequences of what happens. Ellie has been confronted by Faye now multiple times uh, in the forest at the beginning, but uh, then again... Um, well, in the mountain. Yes, at the, at the yeah. mountain pass in Ave. And he's like, the military doesn't suit you. He was like really challenging her. Yeah. And, and she's like, but I have, I have nowhere to go. I have nowhere to belong yeah. to. And part of the, this is how she was raised and her father being an important figure yeah. within the military, right. that group. Like she kind of didn't really have a choice. She was just right. kind of pushed into it. Mm -hmm. So the stakes of this scene, however, are too high for any of them to continue in the path that they were in, in the line of thinking that they were in. Sure. Now you have to make a choice. You and have to fight for a reason. I feel like they did a pretty good job of yes. that. Yes. Yeah. All three characters, because the stakes are Kislev or Nortun, the city, is going to yeah. be completely destroyed. Right. Are you going to, Ellie, support this? Help it, yeah. And just Faye, think it's no Are you deal. going to try to avoid fighting because yeah, yeah, you yeah. see no purpose in it? Right. Rico, do you really not care about your home? Right. Do you really think there's no reason to fight? Or is there really mm. no purpose in it? All three of these characters, the stakes of this particular scene are so high that all of them have to make very deliberate choices about why they are fighting and how they are going to yeah. do it. 
and it pushes all three characters together yes, yeah. by the end of it. And, and they all have really to make the same way. choice, or the, the right, yes. quote, right choice, right? Yeah. Um, so you had a, a one in three chance, no, a one in six <laughs> chance, that all three of them were going to make the right, the, the right decision, because in the end, we needed right. everybody to help kind of resolve this. Right. And then, on top of that, I mean, like, I feel like the character work is really good, but in addition to that, the scene is just amazing from a cinematic standpoint. Yes, again. yeah. Like, when, so, yeah. when Saiten and Faye look up in the sky and they see the Gebler ships, it then cuts to, like, a, a, like a helicopter shot mm -hmm. <laughs> in the sky, kind of panning past these Gebler airships, and, and one of them gets shot down and you see it like falling down into the city. Yeah. And it just, it, it crashes and you see that whole block, that whole district, all the lights. Yeah, all the lights go out and it's just on fire. Yeah. And you see the anti-aircraft guns are mm -hmm. just like, just like machine guns, and just like firing like crazy in all directions as yeah. these ships are approaching. And like the spotlights crazy. are- Yes, the spotlights. You know, swiveling back and yeah. forth. and Kind of some like World War II type imagery, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. cause uh, like in modern, times I guess they wouldn't use the spotlights as much because you can bomb things from like two miles away you know yeah. and you don't need to be that close sure. or like 100 miles away but um, they're flying right over it so they've got ev the whole thing's going and it makes it look very much like a World War II I think yeah and that particular shot of that airship getting blown out of the sky and taking out that whole district's yeah. electricity that was is really cool one of the most memorable shots of any game I've ever played like yeah. I come back to it all the time yeah. Uh, as like an example of like really good, a really good use of camera. Hmm. Um, and just like a really, especially for the time, I mean, we're talking about the I PS1, the, the scale 90s. that yeah. they are selling to the audience with this, yeah. with such little tiny, I know, because this is five polygon this is, models. <laughs> this is world map stuff. This wasn't a cutscene. This wasn't a, an FMV, no. a pre animated, no. pre rendered thing like Final Fantasy. This was all in game. Yes. Yeah, so And so they impressive. sold the scale of it. It yeah. felt huge. Yeah. Even though technically these models are itty bitty, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. in terms of. Like 12 of, polygons. Yeah. yeah. But it feels immense mm -hmm. and it feels really really big and impactful and the stakes feel huge yeah and the fact that they could sell that was a combination of of course the artistry of how do we create something that looks like a city even though it's right mostly just like a texture on an it's almost flat. flat geography especially at night though yeah. it looks better you mentioned with all the city lights yes. and everything going you don't notice, um, like during the daytime, it's you can tell it's just flat. It doesn't look super city-like. It still looks great. I love it. But at night, it looks yeah. way more real. And yeah. it looks way better, I think. Yeah. And the lighting. They're using lighting techniques I've never seen in any PS1 game before. Yeah. It's, it's, they're, they're like faking real-time lighting almost. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> they're not and using And getting away with lighting. it. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. It's, it's super yeah. cool. So this whole sequence is just... It's exciting. The stakes are high. You feel it. Like the action is really impactful. Yeah. Um, the character moments are great. Yep. It's just a beautifully executed sequence, and it's one of the most memorable to me, not only of the whole game, but of basically any game I've ever played. Mm -hmm. I love nice. this sequence. So, um, as as uh, Faye flies up to confront the Gebler ships. That's where F Ellie realizes he's here. The Gebler pilots yeah. go to get their revenge on him, right? To get him back. Um, but there's a sense of respect this time around, which is kind of an right. anime trope a little bit. Like, he beat me this time. But like, mm. as an opponent, like I must, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I respect him as an opponent kind yes, of thing. Yes, yes, right? yes. Which is, I mean, to say that's a trend or a trope is not a bad thing. It's just something you see a lot. It's, it's a common thing. However, mm. they regarded him as, as a, a lamb. As, and it, yeah. it, it, it fits in with their view on people like Faye. Right. Which is like, they're kind of developing as characters into realizing that who they considered weak and impotent are actually strong strong and very much could are threat to, to them sure right yeah exactly. and that's, that's where respect point. comes from you you don't you respect things that are weak <laughs> you, you <laughs> might like something that's weak or you might think it's cute or fun or whatever yeah. but the respect comes from knowing that that thing can hurt you and you treat it properly and give it the respect it deserves right sure let's talk about like 
respecting a three-point shooter in the NBA. It's like, <laughs> oh, they're not respecting him. That oh, means they're, they're guarding him they're, way back. They're giving him too much yeah, space. They yeah. don't, they're not respecting the three. Yeah. It means they don't think he can shoot. They don't think he's dangerous from three. Right. Exactly right. Sports analogy. <laughs> <laughs> we got to throw those in every time we get a But chance. yeah, but that's true. It, so it signifies something pretty important, I think. It's, it's kind of their character development. Yeah. So um, there's a shot here where... Uh, so anyways, Ellie is feeling conflicted now as Faye is fighting those Gebler pilots. But then we right. get a shot of um, Saitan and Hammer um, oh, yeah. trying to like evacuate people. And Rico is there, like, watching this, feeling confused as to, like, why anyone cares about this crappy town, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> but, like, he's yeah. start, it's starting to dawn on him, right? Because Faye said something to him in the previous conversation they had when he saved him from the Rancor. He said, even you must have things left to do here. And at first, he oh, didn't yes, really internalize right. that much. But as he's watching the town on fire and people running away mm -hmm. scared and people trying to help, you know, he, and uh, he says something like, my town, question mark, don't make me laugh. Who gives a damn about this crap town? Right. But then he, then Faye's words come back to him. Even you must have things left to do here. And then, and then the, the line is kind of funny, but I think there's two ways to look at it in his response to this. He says, I'm crap too. Mm. So you can look at that as a continued dismissal. Like, I'm crap, this whole town's crap, why does anyone care? Mm -hmm. Or you could look at it as, this is a crappy town, but I'm also, I'm a crap that belongs to this crappy town. We, say, but we're crappy together. Together, <laughs> yeah. yes. And yes. It, it matters yeah. to me. Like, I'm from this place. Even right. if it is crap, I'm a part of that. It's a part yeah. of me. It's still important to me, regardless of its apparent worthlessness. That's kind of the way that I read that. And so that's when he decides he's going to try and save it. Right, so mm -hmm. he gets into his gear and flies up to meet with Faye as they battle together. He's still kind of like dismissing the fact that he has any desire to be friends <laughs> with Faye. He's still keeping that rivalry alive between them. But yeah. it's like, at least we are, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend yes. in the situation. Which is very common in this game, because you've mentioned so many times how there are lots of villains here and they each have their own different motivations, yeah. right? But <laughs> the my enemy of my enemy is my friend theme like keeps like coming back yeah. like it seems to be like super powerful here it's it's the reason that people do anything it's and it's it may not be the best reason uh, cuz it's kind of negative motivation sure. that oh i don't want this to happen therefore instead of i do want something positive to happen sure. you don't want this negative thing so i'll deal with it for now but everyone in this game has this same type of thinking of my enemy of my enemies, my friend. Yeah. And they all are allied with people that they don't like, that they don't fit in with. And the heroes will either, you know, ally in order to pursue their noble goal, or the bad guys will use each other yes. while they're helpful and then betray them. And then turn on each <laughs> other, yes. When yes. they're no longer useful and we've achieved the purpose, right? Exactly. But yeah, you see it a lot. So as they're flying up Ellie, kind of flies uh, to block their path and she's continuing to insist you know if i do what my heart desires which is to to fight against solaris i'll have nowhere else to go i won't belong anywhere um you know she's she's like i, I this is the life i grew up in i can't do what i want to do and Faye is trying to convince mm -hmm. her why that's nonsense and so he allows Rico to go ahead while he's gonna try to like really convince Ellie. He's like, I'm gonna, you go ahead to the flagship, the Hect, and attack. I will join you again soon, but I need to help her understand something. Right. So he takes her, uh, well, actually she says here, change, how I wanted to, ch to change. I've thought about changing, but I couldn't. I don't have freedom like you. And, and faces yep. freedom, me? Like, he's confused about that. Well, that's a little bit of an Izuchi, but at the same time, it, it's kind of ironic because right. he's been a prisoner in D-Block. I wouldn't <laughs> consider Faye free throughout this entire game, right. honestly. He has kind of right. been dragged along as a... Yeah. He's a tool that's been used By over and over. everybody and else. And he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't have any say in anything that he does, ever. Yeah. And she says, yeah. yes, am I wrong? To be able to choose where you belong to be able to fight alongside those who believe in uh, their own cause. Even if you have much more anguish to deal with, at least you have the freedom to choose your own path, unlike me. So she's just... And that's technically true, I suppose. 
but also not. She right. wants to believe that because it makes it easier. Sure, sure. Because, and here's the I thing. I don't have a choice. Yeah. Here's the thing that I really like about this is if she defects, she stands probably to lose the most mm -hmm. of like anybody in the cast. Mm -hmm. She is the, oh, about yeah. the most privileged person in this world. Right. She's at the very top of the highest rank of Solaris. Yeah. Her father is like a high-ranking general of the military. She's a pure-born Solarian. Mm -hmm. Not only is she conflicted about loyalty, family, but and, and you know you know what's right and wrong in the situation, um, but she's gonna lose that status. <laughs> she's gonna lose yeah. being at the top of the food chain, so to speak. Yeah. That's a scary thing. It takes a lot of bravery to be like, I'm gonna give up all of that, a life that is easier, you know, to come down to who knows what. Right. To be among lambs. <laughs> right? Like that, that element that element is like a part of the consideration of this. And right. so it's a lot easier to say, I don't have a choice. I have to do mm -hmm. this to take the impetus off yourself than to face the fact that I do have a choice. It's just that I have to give up everything. Yes. Everything. And I have a lot to give up. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, Faye isn't, um, he doesn't uh, sympathize with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't give her any credit, right? And this is where he has to force her to look at it up close. So he takes her down into D block it's, as it's on yes. fire, and yep. he's like, and he says, "Look at this town. Take a good long look. This is what you've done," or as a question mark, "This is what you've done." Mm -hmm. Does the word duty justify all of this? Because she kept saying, "It's my duty to do this," right? And all she's, the stuff she learned at uh, Ugin. And as they now, there was one part of this that was a little weird, and I'm actually not sure what to take of it, because she kind of still tries to deny. And, and he raises his hand up. And I felt like it, I, it came across to me like he was going to hit her. Yes, I remember Almost that. like remember Final that. Fantasy VIII when Squall is being teased <laughs> by Renault and he like <laughs> raises his arm up like that. But if you've ever, and like you've seen a bunch of Korean dramas, sure, right? Like, yes. that's a, like that's yes. a that's a thing. It doesn't mean they were really gonna hit you, or maybe it does, but, <laughs> but it's, it's just a, it's a thing. It's a yeah. funny little reaction that they're kind of doing you know, it, it doesn't always mean what it seems in, to In mean. those instances, and FF8 would be the same, it, it's a teasing thing. Someone's teasing you, you're like, ah, oh, you know, like, stop teasing me. This instance yeah. is not that. This is very No, this serious. is very different. And so I don't There's know. There's like fire in the background. I don't know if yeah. it's meant that he's supposed to be like, like look around you, or yeah. like, I don't know what that gesture, the gesture is confusing. I couldn't yeah. read what he was doing, but it looked yeah, to me it. like he was going to strike her and then decided not to. I don't want to believe that was the intention because it seems like a weird choice. Particularly based on how Faye feels about Ellie. Like, it, clearly he wouldn't want to strike her and hurt her, so I don't believe that's what he was doing. It just looked like that. So if anybody else has insight onto what they think that, that animation is all about, because he raises his hand up, and I, I don't know what he was indicating with that. Yeah. But, he goes on to say, you shouldn't have to force it just to have a place to belong. And this is when he starts to, to get to her a little bit, right? Like, the, the life that you're living in order to belong is, is false to who you really are. And he's mm. kept saying this, this is not who you are. This, this look doesn't yes. suit you. Well, this. isn't that so funny? Because he just barely met her. Yes. And he's like, this isn't you. But no, I, I remember <laughs> this very well. When when she is being attacked by the elf zombie yeah. from the Dark Forest. The dark elf, yeah. Um, and he he's like, man. don't hurt Ellie, right? right? So clearly, he knows her better than he even realizes he knows her. Yeah. That's that's a strange thing. But yeah. but she's had some influence in his past that he can't remember. Well, on top of that, in, in the last... Uh, last time they met in the mountains of Ave when they fought each other, she says similarly, I feel like I've known you yes, for a long yep. time. So she, so the, to the extent that we've forgotten everything before three years ago, yeah. she doesn't remember us either. Yeah. So that's strange. They, there, there, there's some fate, some threads of fate are meeting between these two characters. They have only just met, yeah. but they know each other. 
Yes. Is what's going on. And it's it's clear. Because when Faye says, I know you, you're better than this, he's right. Yes. And that's strange. Yes. <laughs> Except when you realize that they do know each other. I don't know how it works. I don't know when or where. But they do know each other. And mm. that makes it make a lot more sense when you have that extra little context. Because right. you start wondering for a while with lines like that. Like, yeah. But you got to remember, they do know each other. They do. Somehow. Somehow. And we'll learn how as we keep playing. But uh, at this point... Faye then takes back off. He and uh, Rico fight together against Dominia um, in a boss fight there. The hect starts to go down, but it's going to crash. It's still into the, the course. Into the city. It's still plotted. Yeah, for that so place, it's yeah. still going to hit the reactor that they're trying to avoid. So yeah. he and Rico try to like push it onto a different course, and, and they get it off course, so it's not going to hit the reactor, mm -hmm. but it's still going to do a lot of damage. And yeah. this is where Ellie comes to help them to try to push it so that it does yes. the least amount of damage possible. And we kind of like run out of, what, fuel something? Yes. We run out of energy. We're like, we can't keep doing this. And so Rico and Faye are like, hey, well, at least we saved the majority of people in the city. Yeah. So, it's so it's so interesting because we break, but she doesn't. And yes. she stays there. And we're just like, what are you doing? And she's like, ah. because... Have you ever had a moment where you've convinced somebody of your opinion to adopt your belief, but then they take it even farther than <laughs> you do? Yeah. I have this quite often, yeah. in particular with, with my wife, but this happens all the time, where I want somebody to be a certain way, you know, I'd like to think it's the better way to sure. be, but maybe sure. it's just me being a little too you know, authoritative in, in that moment, but I, I convince somebody to be like something, and as I, I feel like I've won a victory, but until you realize what the, what that means to that person, yeah. and because it, it's so funny, because Faye doesn't really understand her whole situation, no. so he's just like, this isn't that hard. You're better than this. Just do it. But what it what she had to give up for her to just kind of stop short and well, I got ninety percent of what I wanted. That's good enough. Mm -hmm. And the, when you bring up that she had to give up so much, it's like she's really giving it up, and. She isn't settling for just ninety percent of what she wants. She wants she wants to do as much all, good all as she can. Yeah. And she I don't know how often she's ever really had to exert herself like this. Yeah. Like she may not even know her own limits. Yeah. And so she shows up, she's finally doing something with purpose that she believes in, and she goes just like so hard into it. But that's so real. Yeah. That makes so much sense. Like mm -hmm. I've I've had so many experiences just like that before. Yeah. And they're trying to talk her out of it. And in the end she was right. I think she ends up um saving a lot more people, but herself, she's like, does she have a dream at this point? Well, so she basically... She kind of passes she, out. Like they she, reserve enough gone. fuel to be able to land. Yes. Or like, you know, be able but to... But she doesn't. But she goes all the way. Her gear runs out of fuel and it begins to fall out of the sky. Yeah, that's right? it. That's it. So, and that, those shots are really cool. She's just kind of like in slow motion, yeah. just like descending backwards. And it's, it's a, yeah, it's a self-sacrificing moment. Yes. Where she was like, I'm going to push this thing as far as possible to the absolute limit to where I have no fuel left and I can do literally no more. Yes. To save as many lives as I can. And then I will die. So it's almost <clears throat> as if, I think this is what's happened here. Faye has convinced her that the value of her life is no more valuable than the value of anyone else's life. Yes. But she takes that so literally and so seriously yeah. that it's like, well, if that means that if I don't conserve enough fuel, but I save two more people, then that's more valuable than my own personal life, right? right? Like she really internalized it. Um, but that wasn't really the lesson that Faye wanted her to take from it. He wanted her, he wanted to bring her down to earth a little bit. But, At the same time, I could also... But he's like, no, in Faye's mind, she is more valuable than just your average Joe Schmo. Yeah. So he, he, he... But in her mind, she is no longer any more valuable than anybody. In fact, she might be less valuable than everybody. And so she goes that far. Yeah. But it, it's interesting to note that while Faye convinces her that everyone's life is valuable, in that moment, he does believe that her life's more valuable well, to than, him than everyone else. Like, and to him in particular. Her life's more valuable so he to him than the even, people. He doesn't yeah. even believe the things that he told her to believe, that yeah. she took and internalized. Not to the same extent. Not to that extent. However, I could also see this being... I can see another valid interpretation of the scene being uh, she is willing to give up everything, but she'd rather be dead <laughs> than have, have to, have to live actually through live. the consequences hmm. of it. Interesting. Interesting. It's, it's easier to self sacrifice and die than have to live with your father realizing you defected, yes. with living yes, with yes. I'm a lamb now, 
with living with Solaris Ooh, hunting that's, you. That's interesting. With you know yeah. the, the the true consequences, the, consequences. the hard consequences she of wants losing to just the privilege. Avoid those. Hmm. It's easier to die and self-sacrifice and go out in a blaze of glory. Yeah, I could see that being read both ways, and I think there could be possibly truth to both things. Well, given her past trauma, yeah. there have likely been. Well, I, I, it seems that there have been moments in her life where she would rather her life yeah. have ended. Right? This True. wouldn't be the first time she's thought of this before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's kind of crazy. But in a crazy turn of events. Graf actually ends up saving Ellie. Yeah. Now it's a little bit hard at I did. first to I recognize tell. that it yeah. was his. It was the darker because he has these gear. new wings on yeah, his gear. Yeah. So I was like, "What gear is that?" But when you see him up close and he's doing the pose mm-hmm. and he's like folding his arms yeah. and you see it, it's like, <laughs> that "Okay, mask. that's that's Graf's gear." But she, now and then we show up like right after that. So that was very interesting. So there are some people who have commented and said that I am guiding a little too much in the game and that they think I'm spoiling things. How do here you is, analyze the game is, though? Here is my rebuttal to that. Because Kason and I talk obviously outside of just the podcast. And yes. Xenogears is pretty close to being incomprehensible. <laughs> <laughs> With no context whatsoever. That is not even an overstatement. Yeah. I think the experience of I don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't have the data in front of me. I can't say the majority, but it feels like right. the majority of people who played it, especially when they were young, had absolutely no clue what was no. going on in this game. Yes, that's safe to say. And a lot of it is on purpose with the way dialogue is written. We'll get into that a little bit with the Gazelle mm-hmm. Ministry here in a minute. So my intention here is not to spoil plot twists or to spoil anything in the game. It is to make sure that you have the proper context to even understand it when it happens. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I feel completely justified in the way that I have navigated that line between yeah. spoilers and providing the Helping right context that will help people actually understand the story when yeah. we come to the end of it and not go, what did I just play? I have to play it again to understand it. <laughs> Suckers. I, I think <laughs> there is a value to providing the context so that on your first playthrough, because when I first mm. played Xenogears, I got to the end of it, and I didn't even know, I had no idea how to feel about it. I didn't know whether I liked the game or not. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until I read Perfect Works, and until I started watching the cutscenes again, mm-hmm. and I was like, had all the context behind it, that I, it started to really feel meaningful to me. Mm. And it was like, oh, I see the reference to Jung there. I see the reference to this. Mm. Okay, the pieces are coming together and I'm satisfied and this is actually really deep and it's really cool. So what I'm trying to do are Mm. offer those pieces along the way so that you'll see how it fits when it happens, but there will still be a surprising twist, right? You'll still have the surprise of the twist that you didn't see coming, but you will have seen the breadcrumbs laid down and you'll have them in order so that you can go, aha, this is mm-hmm. really cool and this is a reference to this and that and I understand why. So it makes it more meaningful, other than the thing happens and you're like, what just happened, right? S- yes, exactly. Then, then it's like there is no impact. Instead of total confusion, you yeah. get it and it's surprising. That is the thin, tight rope I am walking here. <laughs> and so far I feel like I've done a pretty good job. <laughs> well, I don't know what's coming, so I don't know what it is what to say about that. So that being said, I want you to really keep in mind Mm. that it is important that Graf, who we have seen so far as the villain of the story, Yes. And uh, and someone using Faye, just ask yourself, why would Graf save Ellie? Why would he do that? Why would he go out of his way, this guy who's at this this top of the level He's a puppet master, manipulating yeah. all kinds of people, contending with Miang and the Gazelle Ministry, and this guy way up here. Why would he do that? Obviously, we don't know the answer right now. You shouldn't, but it's a mystery worth remembering for me. Sure, fair enough. Just keep it Say in mind as you play. Ellie is important. <clears throat> to Graf for some reason. To Graf, when Faye is important to Graf. Yes. So, so she um, asks him in the scene, who are and you? Ellie and Faye te- apparently used to know each other. So yes. There's the thing. Ellie asks Graf, who are you? Why mm-hmm. me? Why did you save my life? 
he doesn't say anything to her. He just pff, takes off and flies yeah, away. Yeah, because we're sh we show up like five seconds later. Yeah, but yeah, he, he made a, he made it a point to save her life, right? Hmm. Okay, so after that whole scene ends, we kind of wake up in one of the houses in in A Block. Hammer comes in. This is something I want to point out about Hammer too. Hammer always enters to excitedly reveal how useful he has been. <laughs> Hey bro, I found your I found yeah. your gear. I, hey bro, I found all the plans for the for the uh, the what, how to sneak in how how we can get the in. Battle hey bro, you. like check this out. Look at what I learned. He is. Um, I've been debating which type he is on the anagram, but mm. I, I think he's a type three. Okay, where he's his fear is worthlessness, similar to Ramses. Ramses mm -hmm. is a type three. Yep. The, the, the fear, mm. the basic fear of that type is worthlessness. And they're the, right. the achiever, the performer. They really want to show their value. That it's really important that they be recognized. Yeah. Um, and Hammer definitely fits into that category to me. Because he's, mm. almost every time he's on screen, he is seeking the approval of those he respects. Whether it's Saiten, or whether it's Faye, or Rico, Rico he's yeah. constantly seeking their approval. And he's trying to show his value to everyone. Yes. Like, see what I did? Praise me. In, in part, <laughs> that could be because he's he's not as much of a fighter. No. We do see his gear later on, though, in this playthrough. Oh, right, yes. Which was, I thought was very interesting. Yes. It's one we've seen before. <laughs> and it doesn't need to be him, I'm just saying. That's the kind of gear it is. But um, he... Uh, he doesn't fight. We're all doing all the fighting. And so in the meanwhile, he is trying to be of, of what use he can, it yeah. seems. Um, at least in part to make up for the fact he might feel guilty that he isn't actually partaking in any of this yeah. actual fighting. He feels... So he's supporting, what, uh, doing what he can. He feels useless. Yes. And he, f he feels like he's not a valuable member of the team. But mm -hmm. he's desperate to have that. and He's desperate to be recognized. And so he's always working for that. That's his primary motivation in the game. So keep that in mind as, as you uh, examine Hammer's arc over the course of the story. But um, he shows up to basically let them know, like, hey, bro, you know, I figured out how we can uh, get out of here. And, you know, like uh, the Goliath factory where mm -hmm. they keep that, yep. uh, this, there's a facility where they keep the ship and, you know, in we can mountain, use that yeah. to escape and blah, blah, blah. Um, Ellie brings up that she uh, had infiltrated that base in the past, mm. and that was where they had stolen the Veltal from, right? Because she had come with the Gebler mm, that's force, right. stolen so it was the right Veltal. before yeah. Lahan, right and before the And then it the got shot thing. down in in Lahan. Interesting. So she had already infiltrated that facility. So they right. ask her about, you know, how did you do that? And anyways, they they decide to go there. Yeah. But what's funny is that Hammer, at the end of the conversation. Uh, says, hey, uh, Ellie, I just want to tell you something real quick. And we're not yes. privy to what they say, right? Yes. And, and we also aren't curious as to what they say, apparently. <laughs> but keep this in mind, Hammer ends up being in the Goliath factory when yes. we show up there. He's already there, and he's in a gear, yeah. So and we didn't know he could pilot gears himself. The right? speculation that players have come up with for what he says to, to Ellie there, mm -hmm. that I agree with, is that he asks her how to infiltrate the Goliath factory because he wants to impress Saiten and Faye and Rico when he's already inside by the time they get there. Because when he's there, he's like, oh, no big. Yeah, I got my own gear. Yeah, yeah I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Hey, what guys, I've got information for yeah. you. Like, hey, I can, I can give you a shop and you know, right. I can pro yeah. provide parts for you. But he didn't know how to get in there. <laughs> Now, <laughs> that's so like, hey, could you like do me a favor? Like, please tell me to get here so I can like impress my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and then she probably tells him well, when he like takes off. That beats some <laughs> of the more nefarious things because this sure. game, this game has me second guessing everybody now. I wasn't at first, but I am yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> that, you yeah. know, everybody: Satan, Rico, the Emperor, Graf, uh, Ramses, not Bart, but Sig Sigurd. Everybody. I'm just like, okay. Like, I don't know what's going on here, so I'm going to start looking for hints that people yeah. aren't who they say they are. Because sure. I don't know that any of them are, and it's very strange. <laughs> Even Faye isn't who he says he is, it appears to me. So, like, this yeah. is very, very strange. Um, that's probably true of Ellie as well, although, because she's part of Ugand. I mean, who knows? Maybe she's right. a, what do they call it? Maybe she's a, a sleeper seller. What's the? Sleeper agent. Like, when somebody says a code word and it yeah, wakes and you up. Yeah, sleeper and agent. And you, you go into, yeah. Anyways, it's like, who knows what's going on here? So... Any time two characters are in secret sharing information uh -huh. that we're not privy to, I'm like, 
It's like 50-50 that you're a bad guy now. <laughs> you were great up until that point, and now I don't know about you, I don't man. Know about you. Well, so. he's done other things to make himself suspicious. I mean, there's all those times yes, back before Yes, he keeps saying, oh, uh, well, okay, got to go, because yeah. he said too much. Yep. Yeah. yeah. There's definitely an element of that to his character. That's and, and again, but not to this level, man. Just like yeah. right in front of everyone. Like, <laughs> hey, we're sharing secrets. Like, if. Yeah, exactly. But the, the reason why I think it's okay to basically pass this one off as not being that is because mm. Ellie is pretty loyal to Faye at this point. If he was, yes, if he was planning point, something behind Ellie's, it wouldn't be with Faye's Ellie. Back, so Ellie, yeah. If it was him and um, maybe Satan or, or him and like Rico, sure. then it would be like, hey, I don't know what's going on here. What you're doing. Yeah. But if it's him and Ellie, Ellie does have that kind of pure innocence kind of yeah. feel to her, at least at this point that's, in the game. That's why I agree, because they don't ever reveal what he said to her in the game. So I do agree with the speculation of other fans that he's probably mm -hmm. trying to get information about how he can infiltrate the Goliath mm -hmm. facility so that he can that's look funny. competent and yeah. impress Saiten and Faye. Because that's, that's, that's what he's seeking the whole game. His whole motivation is driven on, I want to be recognized. Mm -hmm. I want to be seen as valuable. And that would be, I think, in, in, very consistent and in line with his character. So... Um, mm -hmm. So you, you head out to the Goliath factory. Before you do that, uh, you're, you're trying to leave, and there's some guards there. This is a very funny scene. There's three of them. And uh, they, they recognize Faye. Well, at least two of them. Yes, do. I like, love hey, this. That's I the love champ. this part. <laughs> that's the champ. Uh, you know, maybe is we can look the is other it, way. Isn't he on the wanted posters? And they're yeah. like, no, it's not him. And it's so I love it so much, because so they've got the main dude there and one of the, the younger guys is like, that's him. No, it looks just like him on the water poster. And the guy's like, hmm, let me explain something for you. If that, that can't be him. Because you know it, why? Because if that was him, then we would have to fight him and arrest him right now. What's the probability of us beating the champion and coming out of it alive, you know? And the kid's like, oh, yeah, I don't think that's him. And like, <laughs> they just let us go. Well, I love no, it. Then he tries to come up and he's like, no, that definitely is him. And they're like, oh, crap. But then Rico runs in and like beats him up. Oh, that's how it ends. Yeah. Okay, that's and how it ends. And then Rico's like, okay, I'll join you up to like the city limits or whatever. I think it's time for me to leave, to lay low for perfect, a while or perfect. leave until yeah. things calm down a bit. But I'm not going to be your friend. It's like, well, right. cool. He can come with us for a while. Fair enough. But it's a really funny scene. I love that scene. scene. That was so, it was very funny. That was so good. But then you go to the Goliath factory. Um, another dungeon that I like, like I like that you can flip the switches that change the direction the conveyor of the belts, conveyor yeah. belts and yeah. there's, you know, areas where you'll get out of the gears to go like grab a chest and then mm -hmm. come back and it's dangerous to do yeah. that because if you run into a battle where there are gear size enemies, you can't kill them on That's foot. That's rough. And yeah, it's yeah. rough. So, Although they, the invisible walls that they put up around yeah. that place, there's so many things where I was like, oh, there's a staircase or there's a control unit or there's a thing that I feel like I should be able to go to. Yeah. And you just hit these invisible walls and you can't. You yeah. can't go through. That was a little disappointing. Uh, but. Navigation in dungeons is a problem in Xenogears. And it, yes. like I said, it kind of just continues to get worse. <laughs> and knowing where you are, there was a couple times where I went back in this dungeon too. I reversed course thinking I was going forward, but I had been <laughs> Yeah, well sometimes around. you're on a conveyor belt and it, it's literally just blackness behind you. Like yeah. there isn't even <laughs> textured anything. You're just kind of going. So <coughs> uh, I like the boss at the end though. Pretty good boss fight. Oh yeah. And then... Um, you get into the Goliath, and um, I, I thought it was, it's silly, and, it, and it's not like a super convincing scene, mm -hmm. but it is, I think, it rides that line of lightheartedness just enough to where I kind of give it a pass, but Saiten's basically like, Faye, you didn't uh, set up this plan to come and apprehend or to steal this Goliath ship without having any idea how, how to use it. How to pilot Did you? it. Yeah. And he's like, uh. <laughs> and Saiten's like, well, I don't know how to do it either. <laughs> so I don't know what exactly you were thinking you were going to do at this point. But let's try and figure it out. Right? And of course, <laughs> he figures it of out. Of course he No does. problem. Perfectly. Because that's Saiten. Yeah. But they take off with it. And they're flying away. And uh, Graf shows up. Um, Pretty cool uh, moment there with Graf. He, he's his his dialogue is always vague, but I, even as someone who's played the game, I'm not really sure 
why he says what he says here. And maybe some people in the comments will have some mm. uh, insight on this. But he's like, basically he's like, you. The, the Goliath was not meant for you to use, I think is what he says. Yes, um, yes, that's exactly it. The Goliath has a purpose. Its purpose is to destroy the city. It's not for you. Yeah, and yeah. they do mention that the Goliath has the gatekeeper on it. Yes, they do. But I'm not sure, again, I'm just not entirely sure why Graf finds it important that the Goliath not be used by faith. Anyways, I'm trying to piece together whether this is well, a setup to something or whether it's a reference to something. Right. And the, there's a lot of pieces to this game's puzzle. I'm just not sure why Graf cares <laughs> that Faye is using the Goliath here. He, he's, he's shown up to stop him from doing so. Okay, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but they fight on top of the, on top of the, the Goliath. Um, and it's kind of cool that Graf is like not fighting inside of his gear. Like he's fighting mm -hmm. hand to hand yeah. against us. Next to his gear. Yeah, that was interesting. He fights us hand to hand, which again is I think just suggesting how much more powerful he is, right? Yeah. Similar. At, at the same time. Oh, you're right. It's a little bit similar, right, yeah. not like as strong an example, but kind of similar to how they um, show Sephiroth's power. Mm -hmm. in the Nibelheim flashback where you're fighting against dragons and he kills them in one hit yeah, and, he's and you so die powerful. in one hit. <laughs> yes, and and you, you can like yeah. look at his equipment and he's like casting level three spells. It's like, holy crap, that dude's yeah. so powerful. And you see it in the gameplay mechanics. It's reinforcing yes, yeah. the story in the gameplay mechanics. I felt like that's kind of what they're doing here. I feel that way too. Um, although at the same time, I just I, I also felt that Graf wasn't as powerful as I expected him to be. Sure. Having actually fought him now. Now, I guess... He's not in his gear, and that and that makes sense. I still expected him to be. It, well, it went longer than I thought it would go. Yeah, it was it was interesting that. And I thought we were going to lose. He was doing. For sure. He was doing attacks that were thousands of damage to the gears, right? Right. I don't know if you've tried this because I've done a little bit of death blow grinding at this point. Oh right. And the best way to do that yeah. is to have your little characters out of their gears fighting against gear enemies because they do one damage per hit. It's one, 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 <laughs> <laughs> right? And so you have to have somebody in a gear to take hits from yeah. them, otherwise they'll get wiped out. Yes. But you can do your triangle, 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 and earn the points into the into the level so you can unlock the death Sure, blows. sure, okay. But on foot, we do one hit, one point of damage per hit. Yes. Graph comes over and does like 2,500 on foot to our gears. Sure. So it does show a huge disparity in yes. power level there. But on top of that, when we attack him... I mean, that's good, that's good. We're, like, smashing him, and we're doing, like, 1,500 damage, and he's not dying. Right. We have, at this point, at, like, level 35, somewhere in, like, the five or 600 HP on foot. On the characters foot, yeah. have about 500 uh, as a total HP. And so Graf, obviously, is in the thousands somewhere. So mm -hmm. in, the, in the gameplay mechanics, we're coming to understand he's at a much higher level than us. That makes sense. Point, right? I was so sure that this was going to be a win in the game, losing the cutscene situation <laughs> <laughs> where I was like, oh great, why are they even yeah. having us do this? And then I was surprised at how long the fight went. Yeah. And um, essentially Saiten like turns the ship over and like Graf kind of falls off because he's not in yes. his gear. Yes. Right. So he kind of slides off of the, the wing and the gear but falls we didn't. Out. We all held on. Because we were in. Fell. We were in our that, that gear. That makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. And so he obviously falls out, but gets, in gets his back gear in as it he falls. and comes back up to attack. And I love this scene where Saiten tells Hammer to get onto the yes. gun. And to, Hammer's as like the gunner. freaking and he's out. He's like, what do, I don't know what to do. He's like, like, aim and then shoot. <laughs> Well, okay, it's okay. Coming, it's Hammer, he's coming straight at us. He's not yes. even, like, moving. Just, like, pointed at him and fire. Yes. <laughs> he's like, okay, man. And and he gets in there, and he's like, he's like, hold it until I tell you. Three, yeah. two, one, fire. And he hits him and blows him away. And he's kind of, at first, just, like, shocked. Oh, yeah! <laughs> he's like, uh, uh, what it, I think I wrote down what he said. Uh, Master, sir, did you just see my mad skills? <laughs> yes, skills with a Z. With a Z. That was so funny. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, but again, playing into a consistency of Hammer's character, which is, this would be a, a momentous moment for him. 
because he feels like, holy crap, I just shot a gear out of the sky. Right. A this raises my gear. value to the party yes. way up. Oh yeah. my goodness, I did it. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. recognize me. Look at what I did. Did you just see that? Mm -hmm. Kind of almost like, almost childlike. Because yes, children very do this with, look, look, watch me. Yes. Like, they want to be recognized when well, they my, do things, right? My two year old, that's his most common thing is, watch me, daddy. And then he goes, and he's not, he, doesn't, he doesn't even check if I'm watching him or not. But he, he just, he has he, to say that over and over. He wants to know that you've seen it done. Yes. And oh, that's awesome, good buddy! Job. Good job. And then he runs They away. love the recognition, right? Yes. And, and, and head. he's a little childlike in that sense. Yeah. And did you just see what I did? Recognize it, right? I like the Z for mad skills <laughs> yeah. because that hammers that home a little bit more. That's yeah. just like a you know, kids do that, mm -hmm. like the the Z at the end instead of an S. Like that's yeah. a that's a that's a a, a you know immature yes. kind of thing to do, an immature way to talk. Yeah. And so he's definitely kind of like reverting back in that way. And then he starts to wonder, hey, did they make it? I don't know, but it's going to be okay. You got me, right? Like, I'm, I am I can help you out. Like, I can, and then mm -hmm. and Rico's walking up behind him as he's saying this. <laughs> Rico's so <laughs> And he's just like, it. bam, like smacks him. Just knocks but him. The, what I like is if you talk to um, Rico and Hammer, because he's trying to apologize, like, oh man, like, I didn't mean to say that. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'd do anything for you. He's trying to like, grovel or apologize to Rico right. and Rico like basically gets pissed and like shut up just like stop talking <laughs> and if you go talk to Hammer again he's sort of like um, upset you know like why why does everyone talk down to me I'm the one who like helped out so mm -hmm. they're really reinforcing that Hammer struggles when people don't recognize yeah. what he did what he does and he felt mm -hmm. like he just did something so great and he's so excited about it and no one seems to care that much yeah and it really eats at him hmm. when that happens. So, um, good scene there, but then they're flying and uh, Bart, who we didn't know was still alive at this point, <laughs> sees I love it, because you see, the, you see the, the crosshairs and the green, yep. like infrared, not infrared, but what would you be, night vision kind of looking yeah. thing. And um, the, I, I wasn't expecting it. I was like, oh, I've seen this before, but I couldn't remember where I'd seen that yeah. looking, you know, heads up display kind of interface before. And then as soon as like he steps back from the little, you know, per periscope thing yeah. and he's like, all right, boys, like we've got a new, a new target. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's Bart. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> I thought it was so funny. Bart's character's great. So there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about with this. It's, it, well, first of all, Faye and Saiten go back and forth about feeling like they're being watched or that there's some kind of deja vu going on here. Okay. Now, the deja vu is that when, they, when you, we first meet Bart at the beginning of the game, mm. he's looking at them through a periscope yes. and seeing exactly. the Ave ship carrying. Exactly. And so it's like, he's going to shoot at us again. <laughs> I know. And as soon as you realize that, it's just like, oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? This is so, so it's funny. Kind of and funny. not only that, he's got a new weapon. They're called BART missiles. <laughs> <laughs> the most powerful missile known to man, the BART missile. And he's so stoked he gets to use it. Yeah. It's like he's never used them before. Yeah. But he's like, oh, that ship's so big. I'll bet you, could we use a, a BART missile? We could do that. And everyone's like, no. And he's like, look, arm the BART missiles. And then they shoot him. It's just so funny. So he's so proud of it. I'm conflicted about how I feel about this revelation of BART still being alive. Yeah. Because the scene is played out for comedic effect. It's yes, clearly very much the intention. So. Very much so. With the Bart missiles thing. And it was funny. And it is funny. Yeah. It did make me laugh. It's charming. It's, I think, well done as a comedic scene. Mm. However, as a revelation that they didn't all die horribly <laughs> in that... When they were surrounded. Back, yeah. it, back when the, the red gear took yes. everything out. And this yes. is... It, 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 it begs the question of like... Wait a minute, how is the Yggdrasil still working? And then you realize I know there was just that question a second Yggdrasil. That looks exactly it, the same it on the inside. It feels too convenient. Yes. But it's in yeah. the dramatic sense. Mm -hmm. But it's played off as a comedy. So I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's, I don't know how to feel about it. It's, it's okay. too convenient. It's obviously feels deus ex machina-ish. Yes, yes. Even though there is an explanation for why there are two Yggdrasils, I feel like had that been set up, 
earlier, that mm -hmm. had been planted in an earlier mm -hmm. scene. Oh, <coughs> my great grandfather Fatima built this fleet and there was uh, this intention of having three Yggdrasils lead this fleet, but they didn't end up building the third one and the first one mm -hmm. we stole and the second one was hidden somewhere and I knew where that was. Right. Had that all been set up beforehand, the fact that they're in Yggdrasil 2 doesn't feel silly. It's like, okay. Yeah. There was a plan all along, and this was hidden. He knew where it was. Right. It was all part of a, a backup plan type of thing. Should something happen to this, we got a backup. But having them just being in it, it's like, I don't even know if this is the same one I know. that got you destroyed don't know. before. It's, it's like, just, how, are, how is this thing still It's there? like um, history has reverted to literally that exact point before we had even met it. Yeah. Like everything has just reverted right back to that <laughs> moment of innocence where yeah. we didn't know who he was, he didn't know who we were. And that, feel, that feels weird. Yes. That feels off. It feels wrong. Yes. Because everything seems to be that way. And, you know, as far as you can tell, it, it appears that that is what that happened it, until you start talking to them. But Right. And, but then it's played off as a joke. Yes. So it's like you're supposed to just brush over that. It makes me wonder how many more times this is going to happen yeah. <laughs> throughout the game. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I have conflicting feelings on yeah, it. Yeah, that's funny. But, the, 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 again, the shots here are really cool. Um, yep. Because they shoot it down, and he kind of goes up onto the deck to like watch in the distance as this Goliath thing is like coming down, oh, bearing on top of him. Once again, he's. It takes him a while to realize the thing's crashing. Good job you shot it, but it's coming right at it's you. It's going to crash him a while right into until you. it's like right there. He's just like, oh shoot. Yeah, but it's really cool. Really cool shots. A really exciting sequence. However. And, okay, so I, this is my second playthrough, so I don't remember everything. So I don't remember if they're going to explain this, like, right after we pick up for the mm, next weeks. Right. So if so, I'll clarify this then. But the Goliath collides with the it Yggdrasil does. It too. It clearly hits it, and it there is, like, an explosion. It blows up, an explosion. and both ships are gone. <laughs> yes. It they appears... disintegrate and explode, and they're not there anymore. That's what I would have assumed happened. But then we just cut back into it, and Saiten is there with Hammer and Rico. And, and it's no just, big deal. There's, like, no damage. There's so, nobody's and this Goliath repairing was like, anything. The Goliath was, like, the biggest <laughs> ship ever made yes. by the land, it was, right? It was designed so big. to, like destroy Bledovic. Yeah, and it's that got like 50 point. propellers on it, like yes. helicopter propellers on top and then propellers on the front It has well. the firepower yes. to destroy the entire s capital city of Ave. That's what yes. it was designed to do. So and this is, is why large. this is why Bart shot it down in the first place. Right. He's like, that's the Goliath. I bet Kislev is taking going to, vengeance yeah. on Ave or, yes. or, or, you know, going in to end the war by destroying Bledovic. He's not going to let that happen. Of course, right. he doesn't know Faye is the one piloting it. Right, right. So, well, no, and there's even even on top of that, there's Satan as well, who's in the ship, and he's just like, oh, we're going to steer clear way over here. Into the ocean, There's yeah. definitely not going to be any resistance to our ship going over here. This is fine. Everything's perfect. And that's when Just that's so when we happens get hit. to run into Bart. Yggdrasil 2, which... Am I right, because we haven't spent much time there yet, that Yggdrasil 1's a sand cruiser, Yggdrasil 2 is a water? I think they're both. They're both can both? do both. Okay. Right. They can be a submarine in the ocean or in the sand. Hmm. <clears throat> because I thought that too. I was like, it's in the ocean. But I'm pretty sure they're both identical. The ships oh, okay. are totally the same thing. I mean, the interior is definitely yeah. identical. I think that their their capacities in terms of like what they do is also identical. Mm. So, in any case, that's why Bart shoots it down, because this ship was designed to destroy my country's capital. Yeah. Shoot it down. Um, now, Sigurd and, and uh, Mason try to get him to, like, stop for a second and, like, mm -hmm. think about yeah. what he's doing, and he doesn't listen to them. Well, those Bart missiles, man. <laughs> the Bart missiles can't, need can't. to be used. Well, like, what else was he ever going to use the Bart missiles on except for the Goliath? Like, that's, like, yeah. the only... This is his one chance. <laughs> exactly. So, anyways... Faye and Ellie escape somewhere else. They 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 go first, and they I, I, I yes. assume that they. Actually, I don't know this for certain. I don't know if they used their gears or if they just like parachuted out. <laughs> Wherever they are, their gears are with them. Are they with them? Yeah. Okay. So gears, the gears are with them. The, so they their gears, the gears are in the thing. Yeah. So I, I didn't get far enough to see that. So. But they, they need repairs. Their they're not working. They're they're yeah. So they got damaged in the descent. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. But, but, by the way, I do have to throw this out there. The Goliath hit the Yggdrasil, but it seemed like a glancing blow. 
because the Yggdrasil okay. was hitting the water, and it collided enough to where it would have destroyed both of them, guaranteed, no matter what. In fact, just hitting the water would, should have destroyed the Goliath. But when you see it hit the it hit the Yggdrasil, it's coming in like this, and it's kind of like a like a glancing blow. The problem is so. the cutscene stops immediately. And so they don't show the aftermath of it glancing off. They show it hitting it so, at that angle, and then the cutscene just stops. Well, and it's but like, they, but they show they show a gigantic explosion. Yes, yes, from the but but the trajectories were it wasn't like a ninety degree perpendicular like, I hit. Swear, it was like a ten degree like kind of glancing blow more or less. I just want to pull it up real quick because I I swear. Um, I remember you the cutscene. See both ending. ships from a wide angle. There and then when it explodes and they're, they're both gone. gone. I don't recall that, but that is possible. It is possible that they're both completely gone. And this is why I was so confused how they don't like try to immediately explain how on earth any of them are still alive. <laughs> because it was a gigantic explosion. Oh my gosh, you're right. Oh my the god. The whole fetching <laughs> thing is dissolved. <laughs> It's like disintegrated completely. So I remembered the first part where it stops, but I didn't remember that part. That's crazy. Um, yeah, everyone's How dead. is the Yggdrasil so undamaged it's, practically? Now it's time for the, uh, the Satan is dead theory. Um, <laughs> this is where people get into the speculation and we can, we can really let loose on why this, the rest of the game is so crazy. It's actually a dream. <laughs> yeah, uh, anyways, so maybe they will. I just, because I, I saved it right after you get control of Saitan, there's that first save point. Um, mm. So maybe once I start talking to Bart and stuff, they'll explain they actually dove just in time sure. or something. But I just found it strange based on how that all played out. Because they cut to Ellie and, um, and Faye on like a frigate out in the yeah. middle of the ocean. Yeah. And he's basically like, there's only two days worth. And she's like, what are you talking about? Two days worth of food, worth of food down yeah. in the in the hold there. I guess I'll catch some fish. So he seems to be evading her a little bit. Yeah. And then she's like, you know, uh, Faye, like, what are you talking about? Like, what's going on here? Like, wh what about, what happened? How did we get here? Mm -hmm. and, and he's like, I think he says, um, they're okay. Doc, Rico, Hammer, everyone. They're all going to be okay. He's worried that they're right. all dead. Yes, he's yes, choosing yes. to believe they're still alive yeah. because he saw that explosion, and <laughs> clearly they're not. <laughs> Everything was just completely oh disintegrated. <laughs> Anyways, I found that kind of funny. But hmm. what were you going to say? No, that was it. That's okay. that's that's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's like talking to himself after this. Um, we cut to the bridge of Ramses' ship. Ah, uh, yes, yes. And there's some good dialogue here. So Ramses is basically doing something else at the time. I can't remember exactly what he says, but Graf shows up on the bridge. He just like appears there. And and Ramses is like, oh, you know, like, what are you doing here? And, uh, yeah, and, yeah. and Graf tells him, shouldn't you pursue Faye? You know, that, that Goliath ship, he didn't know Faye's on it, but that Goliath ship that just crashed. Like, because it's like, that's not part of his current like objective or his current orders. Yeah. But Graf says, shouldn't you pursue? The one who caused you so much pain and grief is on that ship. And then he goes away. So he showed up just to tell Ramses, Faye's on the ship. Right? Like you should And then probably Ramses go. immediately like leaves. He's and just and like, he's, he's we're just, going right, all right now. Pursue that ship, get ready into get into battle stations. Yes. We're going after that ship. And and Miang is like, but that's that's we not have the plan. different orders here. Yeah, like, you're not supposed to do that. And he's that. like, I don't care, we're doing it. And it's funny that as soon as he says that, she turns mm -hmm. around and walks off the bridge and goes to talk to Graf separately. Yes, and then Graf, but Graf <laughs> has like this weird teleportation power. He can just show up. He just kind of goes where he wants to be and then can disappear in, in an instant. Yeah. I haven't seen that from anyone else except, no, I have. Um, wise Man. Wise Man kind of Wise Man was able to do that. Mm -hmm. He was able to disappear. And right. Interesting. So uh, Graf says uh, to her as she approaches him in the hallway uh, off the bridge, I believe I already said your tricks will do you no good. And then Miang says, I'm just trying to help. Didn't I help get those shackles off? So I think she's referencing there, she helped Faye escape, right? So she played mm. some role in helping get Faye out of mm. the, the D-block prison. 
So interesting. She was also so you have the Gazelle Ministry who were trying to just dis, dis, wipe out Nortun to get rid of Faye. Yes. But Miang got involved in helping whatever Graf is trying to do to get him out of there. Huh. Right. So Miang and Graf yeah. they talk occasionally. Yes. And they seem to. Like I said, enemy of my enemy is my friend, almost yes. a little bit of a situation here, yes. but they're very Everyone's wary of that. each other. Yes, yes. So she says, now you know the vessel will only respond to the chosen one. Now, she again, they're very vague about who they're talking about, but she says, they don't know this, but he's necessary for Carr. He's the very meaning of Carr's existence. I don't think it's a spoiler or anything like that to clarify that what she means by they is the ministry. The Gazelle ministry doesn't know this, but he, meaning Faye, is necessary for Carr. He's the very meaning of Carr's existence. So they were trying to wipe out Faye. She's saying they don't know this about him, but he's necessary for Carr. Hmm. Their, her, and their manipulation of Car Ramses requires that, f that the alive. use of Fay, Because hmm. as soon as they mention Fay somewhere, Ramses flies off the handle and goes yeah. after him. So she's like, I don't think the Gazelle Ministry realizes this when they ordered the purge. But Fay is, is important in our hmm. plan of manipulating Car. That's what she's saying there, right? Interesting. He's the very meaning of Carr's existence. Yes, I must thank you. After all, you did help me, didn't you? That's a line I want to return to later. Yang much, says much that? later. What, the fact that she says, after all, you did help me, didn't you? Yeah. To Graf. Right. And Graf says nothing. He's just dot, 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 dot. So he's not speaking. And then she says, was it for me or for him or for yourself? This is... I, it's so hard mm -hmm. to withhold, but this would be a spoiler to reveal what she means by this. But I want to return to that line later. So keep it in mind. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to the Gazelle Ministry conversation. This is going to be where we leave off for today's podcast. Um, I, I'm afraid that I will have to do some not not hardcore criticism of Richard Honeywood, <laughs> but some light, because we realize how hard it was for him to translate the game. Yes, we but, get that, that. but that doesn't mean that it was done well. <laughs> Xenogears is incredibly difficult to understand. Oh, totally. And it doesn't help when the writer purposefully writes all the dialogue to be excessively vague. I mean, mm -hmm. vague to the point to where it's too much so. Because there's a difference between you're trying to plant setups for something later. If you want the audience to remember that setup, you have to give them something to grasp. Yeah. Right, yeah. If you're too vague about who you're even talking about, if you can't even clearly communicate who you are referencing in the mm -hmm. scene, I can't grasp anything to stick in my memory right. so that I can recall it when the payoff happens. Mm -hmm. So already the scene is written too vaguely. The, the subtext is, it, they're relying on subtext so much without really any way for a first time player to decipher that subtext that you can't keep all of this stuff, mm -hmm. these terms and all this stuff that they're saying and it, it just sounds like nonsense. And it's very difficult to remember it for later. Then, sure. as an added layer to that, it is really badly translated <laughs> in this scene in particular. <laughs> I mean, really badly translated. So we're going to, um, I will put in the description, there's a great uh, study guide for um, Xenogears. I don't think if you're a first time player, you should look at the study guide. Uh, but, and, and in, in, in addition to that, there's like a, a, a guide to translation errors mm. that I'm looking at here. As a first time player, don't look at that stuff because you'll probably find some spoilers in it as they explain why oh, the this paragraphs. is mistranslated or whatever. Mm. As they say, you know, what they actually mean is this and blah, 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 blah. Right. You could probably find some spoilery stuff in their descriptions of why this is mistranslated. Sure. So don't do that if you've never played the game before. If you have, this is 
very, very helpful in deciphering what the freak these guys are talking about. <laughs> And we will look at some of the Japanese here because you looked at that for a specific word here, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Because it was really strange. <laughs> so they use a word that is capitalized. K-N-I-G-R-E-T. Nigret. That is a made-up word. It is not a real word in English or Japanese. Yes. It is based on its um, nigredo. Right? Nigoredo is, is the what word. The katakana. In katakana in uh, Japanese. And I get why he would have thought that this was somebody's name or something yeah. like that. It's capitalized. It's clearly, he thinks it's a, it's a pronoun of sorts, I suppose. Um, or a proper noun, what would you say? It's like somebody's name. And so um, it's written like that, as if somebody's saying that. But, but I, think, I think the katakana missed one character. I or think there was like a that. spelling mistake in Japanese. But I have to find, um, it. <coughs> find it real quick so, yeah. first. Essentially, I'm just going to kind of go through it line by line uh, as you're looking for that. It starts off with one of them saying disobedience. Ramses' orders are to excavate the anima relics in Ignis and to watch yeah. over the lambs. What is he? So they're seeing that he's, he's diverging. Ramses has diverged from his current objective, his current order, and he's going after the Goliath in the ocean. Yes. And yep. they're like, disobedience, like what is he doing? He's supposed to be excavating the anima relics yes. in Ignis right What's now. Where doing? is he going? Why is he doing that? Then you have um, the next guy saying, we can recover the anima relics anytime. Moreover, we learned that he, in quotes, who we've known they're referring to Faye when they do that, was on the transferred ship. Ramses was probably after him. So remember, Miang in the last scene said they probably don't realize that Fei is integral to Ramses' existence. It's like right. his reason for <laughs> living at this point. Yes. They are starting to recognize this, or at least suspect it now. Mm -hmm. Gazel saying, oh, he's, he is on the ship. I bet he's going after him. Hmm. So they're kind of putting that Which together. is something the, ga the Gazelle would... Yeah. The Gazelle also have the shared interest of getting rid of Fei. Right. So they may not be so they may not feel that this is a direct like he's going against them. He's just doing another thing that they right. didn't tell him to do, but that they also want done. So let's put this together. There's four lines, actually five really good lines here to put together. Guy number one, why is he disobeying us? Guy number two, um, we can get the animal relics anytime. He was on that ship, he's probably after him. Guy number three, so it was the trauma. They're speculating about the reason why Ramses would go after him, mm -hmm. right? So it was the trauma. Guy number four, nay, in this case, nigret. It was the severe external wounds. This line sucks balls. It is impossible to decipher what he is talking about there. Yeah. Now, in you found it in Japanese. Yeah, so it's, it is nigretto. And so, yeah, this is um, the word <laughs> nigretto. I, I, according to the little translate tool I have here, it says N-I-G-R-E-T, and I don't even actually want to pronounce that <laughs> right now, uh, the way it would be pronounced in English. Um, but it's um, it's not a Japanese word. It's written in katakana. Now, some yes. katakana would technically still, like the word ramen, if you eat ramen noodles, ramen in Japanese is spelled with katakana. Okay. In part, that's because it's lomen. It's the borrowed word from China, yeah. right? So ramen. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Um, in this case, this is this would appear to be essentially somebody's name, but but there's a, if they if they said nigure um, neglect nigure kuto that's it nigure kuto yes it is it becomes the word becomes neglect yes in, in in a sense if these people are speaking with a lot of katakana which they do appear to be occasionally. Um, that then, they would be saying neglect in English. That they would be using the English word for it as if to, to kind of in, encapsulate. They, they, they do this in Japanese a lot. They'll say the Japanese word and then they'll also say the English word. Or yeah. they'll just say the English word as a way to kind of show a little bit of sophistication in the right. way that they talk, something like that. Like, oh, I can use, kind of like when Americans will use a French word for like technical terms or a Latin kind of word. They'll, yeah. they'll kind of jump into... English sometimes. I'm not saying this is definitely what was going on here, but it's weird that they decided to put the word neglect here in, at all in, yeah. um, in Katakana. It just makes no sense. So my guess is that that would be it. Because there is a quote here from Surya Saga 
uh, obviously one of the creators of the story. Mm. Uh, she was asked about this and she says, it's saying, no, in this case, neglect. The negative trauma might have caused it. So she's clarifying what they really meant. It's yeah. supposed to be neglect, not this made up word, <laughs> nigret. But, but it, ha it would have to be a mistake on the part of the Japanese when the game was originally made in Japanese. Yes. It's not necessarily, Honeywood did his best. Well, he was looking at them going, how do I <laughs> translate <laughs> like that? Yeah, it was very However, hard. it's even the following part after the word Nigret, he, he translated this as it was the severe external wounds, but it says yes, yes. trauma or something. It's the, different here. So here, uh, there's a couple of kanji. They say it would be a negative trauma. Yeah. So the first kanji would be negative, and then the next one is trauma. And that is not the same as an external it's wound. Not, it's not an external <laughs> wound fact, at all. It's not even it's close. It's the opposite. <laughs> it's an internal wound. It's, an, yes. it's a the neglect which caused internal trauma. Internal trauma, not external not wound. Not external yeah, wound. So, okay. It should say, nay, in this case, it is neglect internal trauma that is driving Ramses to do this. Yes. He was traumatized, as we saw in the cutscene, right, by this event that happened, and he is pursuing Faye yeah. because of that drive to get back at him for that However, trauma. However, to nail down a point that I just made about the English with Japanese, the word used for trauma Right before this, when the when the gazelle says no, it, it, so it was the trauma, is turamaka. They use the English, the English word trauma, word again. but then they use the Japanese word for trauma. Um, what for negative trauma? Sorry, which was what a mess, dude. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I we understand why this was hard for Hollywood to translate. Yeah, it's not an easy script. It's very technically difficult to translate this. But yeah, it should be trauma, not external wounds. So, let's re-examine But they this. use two words for trauma. So, it, I get why it would be confusing for him. Like, wait, they use the different word, but anyway. So, let's examine those first four lines as it, as, as a, with a more faithful translation. Disobedience. Ramses' duty should be the excavation of anima vessels sleeping in Ignis and the supervision of the lambs. Mm-hmm. The anima vessels can be collected at any time. Moreover, it is confirmed that he was in the transferred ship. Ramses was likely going after him. Guy number three. Is it the trauma then? Trauma, ka. And number four, nay, in this case, it is neglect, internal trauma. So, so this is part of what, this is part of why it would definitely be neglect because they used the English word for trauma before. So then he says, no, trauma janai, you know, negurecto this, it's something like that. Yes. Where it's like, not the trauma, not the English word for trauma, the English word for neglect. So there's, yes. it's, it's almost poetic the way that they do it. Yes. Sorry, that's my last comment so about that. So that's, that's what they're saying. Yeah. Here, right? It makes it much more clear. It does, it does. When they're not using this made up word, nigret, and the fact that it's not external wounds. Now. That's nice that Soria Saga herself kind of clarified. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I, it, yeah. That's so funny. we got the next Gazelle guy says, uh, according to the reports from the memory cubes, there are several surrounding him that have the potential to become animus. Again, this is the retranslated line. The original was, according to the memory cube, we found multiple subjects around him that the possess way. the animus factor. Memory cube. Yeah, in English again? Okay. So they're using <laughs> they're a lot of English words. They're throwing a lot of English words. I know that Japan has words for memory and cube. So. Now, in the last episode we recorded, I told you about how the memory cubes in the mm -hmm. world are not just save points they're not just this ah uh, yes they're yeah. not just a save point that you go save at they are they're diegetic. literal diegetic yes. memory cubes i remember you mentioned that, in yeah. the world yeah and so when you are going and saving progress the gazelle ministry has access to the things you record in the memory cube they are able to monitor you through the, um, the through the memory cube hmm. so he says according to the memory cube we found multiple subjects around him that possess the animus factor. Now, the, a, a more accurate translation to that would be, there are several surrounding him that have potential to become the animus. They're referring to the people traveling with mm. Faye. They have this yeah. potential of an animus factor. Now, we talked about the anima and animus a couple yes. weeks ago. 
it's not exactly that. We'll, what they're referring to as anima and animus we'll learn more about in the future. But these people are important. The mm -hmm. Gazel Ministry are realizing these people with him, there's something special about them too to consider here. Yeah. Okay. Now, most, this is where I appreciate the inclusion of someone like Graf or somebody who seems to be a bad guy but is subverting the other bad guys that yes. we know of. Um, because most stories would just be like, oh, it's just an unlikely ragtag team that just happened to find each other at the right time and they all ha had what each other needed and they did it. But it's like this feels directed. This feels contrived. This feels yes. like it, w it is being guided by someone and it's cheap for that someone to just be the writer of the story. Yes. <laughs> but the someone here is, no, this, this is very unusual. Something's behind it, and they're right. Some, yes. Someone seems to be behind it yes. in, some, in some weird way, kind of right. like guiding things. Exactly. Um, then the emperor comes in. He comes in like over the, the, the screen. The, yes. The, the display. I was wondering right. what the emperor's relationship was to the gazelle. To these guys. Yeah. We'll get more of that as we go through the game. But he says, uh, yes, molecular engineering, nanotechnology, the land of all creations, the capital of Zebuin culture, resting beneath the ocean of Akavi. For 19 years, the ethos kept it secret. Mm. So there's some technology there in that ocean underneath there from mm. some ancient civilization, right? Nanotechnology in particular. Uh, is this acceptable, Cain? And now this is where we get the reveal that this the Emperor is Cain. They're the one emperor, the same person. And that's great, except we don't know who Cain is. <laughs> and we also don't know who the Emperor is. And the whole thing. Because as soon as they called him Cain, I was like, oh, he's Cain. Wait, who's Cain? Like, <laughs> I, I, like, I felt like there was supposed to be. And I was like, oh, they mentioned him once, but what? Yeah, it was kind of weird. But I don't get what the deal is. Why did they, why did they hide his name so much this is, for someone that I don't even yeah, actually care about or know about? This is another thing that they do that makes the whole thing difficult to unpack. Because it's like, what parts of what they are saying are like, they're just withholding and it's not going to matter when they reveal it, and what parts of <laughs> exactly. what they're withholding are going to be important. Because yeah. they, they kept mentioning Cain before. Yeah, like even Cain wouldn't. I can't remember what it even was. Even Cain wouldn't object uh, or something like that. Something like that. And it's like, okay, who's Cain? Like, hey, he's an esteemed person. Who's Cain? You know, and all of a sudden you got this, who's Cain? But the, you, all along, you've known who Cain was. He's yeah. the emperor that Saitan talks to. You just didn't know his name. But now that we know that there's Emperor Cain, it's like, oh, this is a big reveal, right? But... But what's Actually, the like? Not. What's the substance <laughs> of the reveal? There, there isn't any. Yeah, it's just like so. Why did you hide the fact that his name was yeah. Cain this whole time? It and doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly, it doesn't matter. Now, I was curious. What's the emperor's relationship to the gazelle? I get that, but the fact that his name is Cain is just kind of irrelevant to that relationship yeah. that I was curious about. So this, that's where the substance. This is. is another layer that makes it difficult to understand. Yes. What's important? So they what's keep not. saying him or they or they use names we don't know, and it's like it, they didn't have to do half of that. Maybe. Yes. So, is this acceptable, Cain? Uh, the Emperor says, yes, it will do for now. Uh, the next guy says, 19 years. That coincides with the time when the Earth shifted. Mm. And Gazel says, indeed. Or the next guy says, indeed. And then the next guy, but I don't understand. The technology didn't seem that crucial to us. The next guy says, he is still a lamb. Giving him the ability to do as he wishes is questionable. <laughs> well, one um, of the things I got from this, at least within the English translation, is that... The gazelle, I, I didn't know how subservient the gazelle would be to him. Once he showed up and I was like, oh, it's like he took over their screen and he showed up at their meeting. Um, I was thinking like, oh, they're, he's, he's the leader leader of all the leaders and the gazelle would be subservient to him. And that may be the case, but they challenge him and they don't, like they, they give him deference in, uh, to a large degree, but they question his... Um, guidance and sure. they challenge his ideas and they seem to have more of an equal footing as opposed to yes. I would say he would be above them because his title is emperor but he doesn't seem to be like it's a whole council of elders and the emperor is just kind of like what would you like the chief uh, yeah the chief counselor yeah. That's kind of like in the Supreme Court, United yes. States Supreme Court, there's the Chief Justice, but he yes. really doesn't have much more say, or any more say, than it's, it's, the other nine. Isn't it like when, the when they eight. vote, it's like the tie-breaking vote, or like something well, like that? Well, because there's an right? odd number, but yes. as the Chief Justice, he is just one of the justices. I think he just, his office well, decides what gets docketed or not. Right, but then there's also... The Vice the, President in, in, in the yeah, Senate. Yeah, in the Senate. Yeah, because the Vice President presides over the Senate, and only votes when it's a tie. Right. Yeah. 
So that's the idea. It, it, it comes across almost well, kind that of way, like rather a, than oh, you're the freaking you, emperor. Uh, your wish your, is my your command. Your word is law. Yes. <laughs> that does not appear. Right. And and I kind of noted this too when Satan was talking to the emperor, that there was some. Satan seems a little more your wish is my command than than the gazelle than the, do. The though. gazelle do. But even Satan felt comfortable with with questioning okay, and bringing so up his own ideas. Now that you've said that, I'm going to yeah. just skip reading the rest of this because that's more or less all you can. That's from what the I scene. glean from it. You can't like you can't really understand what they're talking about. You just get the sense of power struggle and who has the upper hand and who's the authority yeah. here and. They're all working in the shadows for their own yes. purposes. I don't know what that is yet. They're just using a lot of terminology I've never heard before. That is more or less what's happening in the scene. The end. I'm done talking about that. All right. And that's also the end of this podcast. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Go out um, with a bang. I believe we said this last time, but I really love the kids love section. That was um, really, really, really cool. good. Really good. Yeah, I love it. There are a lot of people who don't love it as much, but I think it's great. It is kind of long, but I think it's paced well. Yeah. And well, the um, save point. I don't know about you. I didn't save. I saved when I got to the Thames. Oh yeah. And so you essentially, got a further. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it's like. I, I'll save that thing. for next time because there's the yeah. long conversation with Ellie and Faye that I want to yes. get into a little more. Okay. We've been going a little long for this episode, so I'll just save okay. that for next time. Um, I will pin as in the comments where to play up to next time because I forgot to look again. So I'll let you know that too. <laughs> Thank you. Where to play up to on the next episode. Till next week. Thanks for watching. See you later. Peace out.